Hello. Anybody there? Gerald wants some meat. I want the flesh. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Arena. Hello, Arena. Hey, Mario. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> We're just gonna wait till some people come on. Like so the internet's a little off. Ready? It's your show. I'm just a prop. Alright. This, this. this is your thing. Alright, guys. I'm, gonna start I'm just here to look cute. Alright. <laughs> Hello guys. Welcome to Gerald's movie relish for the Halloween special. <laughs> I am your host, Gerald. Um, and this is my partner in crime, Emma. Watch out with that knife there, buddy. <laughs> Hope you guys are all having a good Halloween. This is a special for you guys. Gerald the Ripper. <laughs> That's what he was going for, kind of a Ripper effect. They got it, they got it. <laughs> And I tend to drink the blood of my victims. Uh oh. This is not going to turn out right. <laughs> All right, guys, you guys probably know the theme of the week has been um, movies that are perfect for Halloween for all ages. And we are going to do the top 10 movies that are perfect for all ages for Halloween, aren't we, hon? Yes, we are. Well, he is, and I will comment because I don't know his top ten. He hasn't shared it with me, so this is a surprise uh, for me too. It's a surprise for. <laughs> so everybody. I will see whether or not I agree with it. <laughs> I might have to kill her afterwards. Ah, we can't. I'm already dead. <laughs> well, I'll kill you again. Man. All right, guys. We're not going to do any particular order, though, is. Because all 10 movies, though, have a very unique uh, kind of style, and they kind of all have their own corks to make them really special and really unique, though, I think, though, all 10 of these movies I are. think the problem was it was really hard to go number nine, number eight, number yeah, seven, really because they are also very different. Yeah, absolutely, they are really different, totally different. He was struggling. He was like, I can't make a top 10. I'll just do 10 of the ones that I think are great and in a random order. Yeah, so... There's no order to this, guys, so we're just going to jump right into it first. And the one movie that I'm going to talk about first is going to be, of course, The Addams Family, guys. I really like this movie a lot, though. Let me interrupt for just a second. This is, this is really Gerald's kind of top ten movies to go to for families. Yeah, for families, yeah. So that means all ages. Yeah, all ages. Okay? It's very important to you because you got some scary-ass shit out there. <laughs> Where I usually use a pillow to watch. Because oh. I don't usually watch them, but Gerald makes me watch them. And then I'm mad at him because I'm like, I don't want to watch this stuff. But this is his top ten to watch with the entire family. Okay? So that means children from wee little all the way to wee big. Absolutely. Okay, go ahead, honey. I'm sorry. I just wanted to clarify <laughs> that because you hadn't mentioned that. Hold on. So let me do some more. Okay, that's blood. why I'm here. Let me do some more of my blood. Ah, yum. All right, guys. The first one I'm going to do, of course, is Adam's Family. It was made in 1991. I really love this movie, though, guys. I remember the first time I saw this movie, though. I think it was about maybe eight years old when I saw this movie for the first time. I remember it was on VHS. had the orange lettering on the VHS title and stuff like that. It was really, really cool. I like this movie, guys, because it reminded me so much when I was a kid when I first saw it the first time with the uh, – with all the wonderful characters in the movie. We got Ralph Dewey as, as Gomez Adams. He is a fantastic movie. Got a Mia. He needs uh, to step forward. He needs to reach out to me because I always liked him as an actor. I don't, he has I know. never stepped forward. I know. To, to, come on, Raul. This is this is my invitation. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought he was an interesting he was. actor. Very different than everybody else. Absolutely. He, he, he's, he played this role so beautifully in the movie. And I love his costume in the movie that he wore with the stripes, the pin stripes, like something like that and stuff. He's fantastic, of course. And then, of course, you have Morticia Adams in the movie, of course. 
who is by the talent of Angelique Houston, though. She's brilliant in this movie, though. Those two guys had such an amazing chemistry in this movie that when you see them uh, kind of combined together with one another, though. And so that's – and then they're, they're witty bear. I like the part where they have the auction scene in the movie, though, where they're bidding on their own little thing that's like a little uh, – Finger thing that you get your finger stuck and you can't get it out of. Oh, the the thumb trap. Yeah, yeah the thumb trap. Yeah, I love I love that stuff. And they're bidding on like like twenty thousand. It's like like thirty thousand. And it's like oh, oh, fifty thousand. Well, they had this kind of weird relationship. Know, it, really it was did. Morticia and Gomez, right? Uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Boy, this is an old movie. Don't they? They don't hardly show that one anymore. Oh, I know, on TV. I know. But you can't see it on really? Netflix, so it is on it Netflix. It is on Netflix here in Belgium. You, everybody has a different kind of Netflix, but it, it, they did put it here, and we we watched it not that long ago, just because it's just kind of nostalgia for absolutely. us. Absolutely, this is yeah, it, absolutely. And I love not just that, but I love the story of the movie too, because the story is about you know how Uncle Fester Adams, who apparently disappeared a long time ago that he couldn't find, and apparently this woman who's his mother of Fester Adams supposedly brings him back and poses like a kind of like a doctor, kind of like a psychiatrist, who brings it back to the Adams family, and they basically convince the Adams family that this is their Uncle Fester, of course, which is Gomez's brother, of course, in the movie. It was played by the wonderful talent of Christopher Lloyd. He's fantastic in this movie, though. I love his bald head and the outfit he kind of wears. Like, he has this pale complexion and everything like that in the movie as well and everything. And then he comes it kind of uh, it comes back into the family, of course. And, of course, they're a little hesitant, you know, who he really is. Does he really, is he really Professor Adams that disappeared for all these years and everything like that? But it's... It's really cool because then you get to see how they kind of how he kind of interacts with them and like that stuff. And then, like, of course, you have the kids. Of course, you have uh, Pugsley, of course, in the movie, who's a brother, who wears like the, the white pinstripes on him, like that stuff, and the shorts and the boots he wears for like the outfit he always wears. He always wears the same outfit though, and like that. And then, of course, you have Wednesday, of course, Christina Ricci in the movie as well. She's fantastic in the movie as well. She plays, but she she's so creepy in the movie though because she's got this like this this black like polka dot kind of looking flowery looking kind of dress though, and then she has like this kind of like this, you know, this kind of this weird this innocent kind of evil look. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like me. Uh, no, <laughs> I think so. And then you kind of see how like you know how she kind of messes up with her brother. Like, there's like a scene in the movie though where she like puts him like in the in the an electric chair, and she wants to. And they're just playing. And they're just we're, well, we're just playing. Like, come on, big mom. knife. You know, she, he's, she's like, come <laughs> here, come here, let's play. <laughs> but that scene is so great. The movie, though, I love that scene. The movie too, it's so fantastic, though. But I think what makes the movie so fantastic in Anthem is just the, the the tone of the movie and the 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 feel of the movie as well it has that really that mystery and that darkness you need in the movie though as well of course like it's that. a little bit of everything, everything. you know really you is. got the humor yeah. and you got kind of the sadism part and yeah. then you have um i don't know you got the the dark undertones the really. dark undertones but at the same time i mean the thing i liked about this uh movie is because they <laughs> Their family and the darkness that they live in is the complete, is the norm, is normal. Yeah, exactly. And it's the other people that are, that we would consider normal that are weird. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's kind of, it all, it's all about perspectives, isn't it? Absolutely. It's really about yeah. It truly is about perspective <laughs> about this movie, though, but it's such a good movie, though. I love the scene where they have to, where they've had that party in the house, though, as I went, and they've they got all the family members, and you kind of see Cousin It with the long hair. <laughs> And like stuff, like that stuff. That's a great scene in the movie, though, too, of course. And the thing with the hand is like the thing, yeah, yeah. The thing was just a hand oh. that we just kind of waited them around. Oh, that, that, and then it's with all its hair. Yeah. It oh. just looked like a big mop walking around. Oh, God. Um, I saw that somebody said our voices were cutting out. Is it getting any better? Do you guys hear us okay? Yeah, do you guys hear us okay? We'll make sure. Let us know if you can hear us okay. Yeah, let us know. Well, either way, for me, um, the Adams family is about nostalgia. Yeah, it it is. is about um, it's about family. It's about it's about family. This movie's just about family, and um, they might not be the, the 
family according to the norm of society, but they stick together through thin and uh, thick and thin, and they love each other. And they're all kind of weird. Yeah, ways. and they're and they're all very very unique beings. And they, I, what I love about the movie is that they're not being forced to be somebody that they're not. That wow. family embraces every individual with their own unique qualities and their own weirdness. Yeah. You know, it, they all embrace them with love, and they're not trying to change them, and they're not trying to make them fit into something. They are truly and utterly supportive of everybody's individuality, and I love that about that movie. So I think that's a great movie to start with. Absolutely. And it's a fan. It's a movie you can watch. But I think the scene I really like in the movies when they have the party though is like they have the dance like mamushka, mamushka with the knives and shit stuff. Oh, I love that scene in the movie though. I well, think, he's great. Raul Julia is uh, great. Uh, Jessica Houston is great. Christian Rich is beautiful in that movie too though. It's, it's every character. It's a good movie. movie overall. <laughs> it's a. I, I just love. It. And maybe that's just our nostalgia talking. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, we love it so. Yeah, I do too. That's our first go-to movie for the whole family. Yeah, I think it's a great movie, though. I really do. Okay, guys, number two, of course, on the list, of course, is The Witches. I really like this movie. It's made in 1990, of course. I love this movie, too. It's a really good movie. It, it looks like we're going towards our kind of generation <laughs> movies. Would you apologize? <laughs> but, though, but those were really some of the double rules. That, that time period was really a lot of great movies like that. You know, you had a lot of variety in those kind of movies, though. I really love The Witches, though, but The Witches is a really great movie. And, of course, once again, Angelica Houston is in this Angelica movie. Houston. Yeah, she plays the, the main witch. The Grand High Witch, yes. That and movie scared the shit out of me wow. when I was a kid. I, was, <laughs> I, I love this movie, though, because it's basically about a bunch of witches, basically. And they basically want to basically take over and basically want to turn basically everyone into, I don't know, kind of what... No, it's about they want to turn the children wanna, yeah. or they want to... What was it again? This is I haven't seen that movie in forever. I know they turned them into mice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But I think um, they want to eat them. Yeah, they want to eat them. Yeah. I think that's the original the original story. But yeah. it kind of starts off with yeah. this little girl that's being a uh, long, long time ago. Yeah, yeah I remember now. Yeah. And it starts off with a boy with a girl that's they kind of lurk the children with candy. And with singing, um, there's one of the witches who's really yeah. good singer. Yeah, the blonde. Yeah, the, the blonde. blonde who yeah. is the assistant to the Van High witch. Yeah, and and so um, she kind of looks them with her voice, you yeah, know, she does. and she kind of enchants these children, and they all go there. And what they do is they suck out. Well, no, that's what it is. They suck out. Uh, the life force that, out of them. Uh, they yeah. literally kill them, which is yeah. kind of gruesome if you think it about gruesome. it. Good God. For a Disney movie. I think it's Disney. That's Disney. very gruesome. Um, <laughs> so they suck out the life out of them to, to keep them young. That's what it was. That's what I'm going to do with something to my, my <laughs> Was it that? Or no, that's Hocus Pocus. <laughs> I got the wrong movie. I told you I, I was just a prop. <laughs> you, should, you should be correcting me. Oh, no, wow. that, I don't know. What What do they do? They, I know they turned, she turned one of them into a mouse. Yeah, she turned one of them into a little but boy. But I think they kill them, though. They try to in the movie, yes, of course. Yeah. But I think, I, think it's a, I love this movie a lot. It's a great, great film. Oh, I love about the, I love the part where they... You can uh, tell I'm not the movie, the movie genius he is. <laughs> no, it's true. I think they kill the kids. Yeah, but I, what I love about this movie, though, is it really has a lot of great scenes. I like the part where they, where they see Anne like to Houston, Houston though, and they have like you know they're all dressed like like they're normal people, these witches though. But then they start taking out their masks though, basically. And you see them yeah. like these gruesome, really, That's what me. really creepy creatures and stuff like that stuff. And she has like this long nose, like this, uh, and like this creepy hands, and they're like old, and I'm like, Ugh. they're just ugly. They're ugly. They're just so that scene is so cool in the movie though, like this. But I was like a scene. They have this meeting, and yeah. they go, "Okay, witches, everything's closed up. Yeah. You can, you can, uh, you can relax now." And they start to unzip themselves yeah. out of their mask and their oh. shoes, and and it's just one of the, that scene where she pulls off her face, oh. and then you you get the shot from her back, and yeah. her back is all weird, weird and bumpy, bumpy. Oh, that scared yeah. me when I was little. <laughs> But I think it's such, I think it's, but I also like the scene too where, where you see their eyes go too because their eyes turn purple too purple. as well and as well yeah. too. And they kind of like, they kind of like, they can use like, what they're like, they use like lights basically to attract people basically, do. You know, right. And stuff like that stuff. But you see one point in the movie where, where, where the, where the one which is just, a, she's just all in black though, and she has a sunglasses on though, and you see the boy who's the main character in the movie. 
And he's up in the tree, though, of course, and she takes her glass on. She has like, these piercing blue, purple eyes, and I'm like, this, and, oh my god! I every time I see those scenes, the one I'm like with those piercing purple eyes is it's weird and it's, it's freaky as hell. But I love this movie. It's a great nostalgia movie, though, of course. Yeah, they do the same. They lurk the kids with yeah. candy because yeah. I remember there's yeah. a scene in there yeah. and she wants to give them chocolate. Chocolates, yeah. And, and and somehow that's, the that's, kid manages that's, not that's, to go that's there. How, that's how they alerted his friend, though. His friend that, uh, oh, yeah, Bruno. Bruno. The little chubby one. The chubby fat boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the little big bone. Yeah, little, little, let's not call the children fat, honey. Oh, big bone. Big bone. He's chubby. <laughs> uh, but he's so cute and adorable. But all he thinks uh, about is food. It, and so they kind of lurk him. Oh, that's what it was. I remember. <laughs> I I haven't seen this movie in probably twenty years, and I've heard they're making a new one. So yeah, I heard that. Yeah. But yeah, that's what it is. They found that they made this poison, uh, poison or po potion that yeah. turns all the children into mice. Yes, because they want to get rid of the kids. They hate yeah. kids. Yeah, I hate children. They yeah. hate kids. That's yeah. what it was. And so they. They invite this little boy to their boarding room, yeah. uh, and they they promised him chocolate, yeah. and so they turn him into a mouse. They turn Bruno into a mouse, <laughs> and so um, eventually Bruno gets away, and yeah. you know, but, and the little boy sees what happens. Yeah, he does. And I remember they try to capture him. They 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 basically he's running. You see him running out of the out of the hotel, and the witches are chasing after him and stuff like that stuff, and they get him. And they, they, they kind of turn it off and like, hee, 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 Yeah, they try to find him. And so the whole movie is about um, this little boy who's on vacation with his grandma yeah, into that same hotel yeah. who sees the witches yeah. turning this boy into a little mouse. mouse and um, eventually he helps the boy. And, you know, in the end, well, the, well, the, well, the, grandma helps the, the, the witches... The take their own the grandma, poison. The, 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 the grandma helps the boy because he dips the poison in their soup though when they're trying to all eat them. And they and all they, 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 turn they, they, into mouths. Oh. No, they're more rats. They yeah, turn rats, into rats because they're ugly. Yeah. And he's, 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 he's see them turning into rats still like Yeah, it's a it's a good oh, movie. I love, if you haven't seen it. I love that part where they, I love that part where they turn around and they're all eating the soup. They're like, they're eating the soup. And they start all turning into rats like the hotel and I'm like, and then I try to kill him. Like, and the grandmother is helping everyone. And people forget the role. Eventually, the little boy turns into a mouse. And people forget that Rowan Atkins is in this movie too. He plays a freaking. Rowan Atkins in. Yeah. He plays Mr. the Mr. owner B. of the yeah. hotel yeah. or the manager. Yeah. And, and in the end, spoilers. But in the end, the witches all turn into rats. They drink their own poison because yeah. the little boy drops it into their soup. Yeah. Um, but then you're still, you still got Bruno and, uh, and the boy who are still, yeah. uh, mice. Yeah. But the, but the blonde and comes. And then all of a sudden. But the blonde comes back. A to, good witch. Yeah. The a blonde. good witch. The blonde, was, was, she, was a, she was the assistant of the Grand High Witch. So she yeah, and she didn't quite agree with what was going on. No. She comes back and turns the boy, uh, the, the little. Boys. The little mice back into a boy. That little boy mouse. Ah, oh, good endings. Doesn't everybody love a good ending on Halloween? I do love a good ending on Halloween, though, guys. I really like that movie. It's a classic. Good movie. Though. If you haven't seen it, go find it. I've heard yeah. they're making a new one. I'm not quite sure. I love my nostalgic kind of movies, so it's always hard for me to see re remakes because then I'm like, ah, no, they didn't. They start changing stuff, and I'm not happy. But that's just me. I like to hold on to. Nostalgia. Yeah, those are movies that came back every year around yeah, no, this time yeah. on TV. True. And I remember as a kid, me and my brother would watch it oh, every yeah. time. Every time we would watch it, it would be, it'd be on BBC or somewhere. Yeah. And we would watch it. Same here. But I haven't seen that movie yeah. forever. It's been a while though since I've seen that one too. But so it's, which one's next? And number three, of course, well, there's no particular order, guys, of course, as you know. Well, that's one, of course, is the movie Hocus Pocus, which was a Walt Disney movie, which was filmed in 1993, of course. And it's about the Salem witches, though, of course. One of them is played by Ben Midler. And then the other one is Sarah Jessica Parker, of course. And the other one is, I can't remember her name, though, but she's the woman from Sister Act. played the little chubby one, though. And like, like, who's now very slim. Yeah, who's very slim, yeah. 
so I saw her just recently, and I was like, oh, she looks very healthy. Yeah, she does. I, I remember her from Sister Act. Also, but was a great actress. Oh, yeah. Great. Three great actresses. Oh, absolutely. Three. I, I love Betty Midler. I'm a oh, big Betty Midler absolutely. fan. Absolutely, yeah. She just makes me laugh as a kid. You yeah. know, I saw all the she, – she makes some funny movies. Oh, yeah. And she's, I haven't seen her in forever, but she's, 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 she made great movies. She's great in this movie, though, but it's – you know, it's about the Salem witches who basically get basically executed, though. Because back in the old days, though, they used to burn them, basically, way back then. You know? And at the beginning, when you see them burn, you see them... Burn trying. them or hang them. Yeah, they, well, back, they burned them in this Drown them. They, they did a whole them. bunch of stuff. Yeah, like they witches. burned them. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Jesus, man. I told you not to get me on your shit. Oh, my God. Seriously. But no, it's, you know, it's, you see the movie, of course, Hocus Pocus Works. And then you see the burned witches at the beginning movies because it was filmed during the Salem witch trials, kind of like that back in those days, though, when they burned witches back then. And the witches claimed they were going to come back, basically. You know, things like that, you know. And you see them die, of course. And I think uh, that the little girl, who I think is played by the, her name is uh, Thorn Bush. I think Dora. I think, Dora, yeah. Dora. She's the little girl from, from American Beauty. American Beauty. Yep. She is the middle of American Beauty, yes, of course. And Thora she, Birch. Thora Birch, yes. That's what it is, a weird name. It is a weird name. Yeah, it's a very weird Interesting. name. Interesting. Absolutely. Anyway, she's cute in that movie. Yeah, she is adorable in that movie, of course. She really is. But then, of course, you see in the movie that I think, you know, she tries to, like, you know, she ends up accidentally bringing him back to life, though, in the movie The Witches, though, basically. Well, they turned their house into a museum. Yeah, that's right. And... Their book is in there, yeah, the, and their witch book, and it, it's got an eye on it, yeah, isn't it? It like looks around. It's a freaky book. It is a freaky the book's book. actually alive. Yeah. She calls it at one point. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she calls a book. I remember that scene. Yeah, she does. I remember that scene anymore. Yeah. So somehow these kids are playing around Halloween. They're playing in. They're not supposed to be there. Uh, they're trespassing course, into yeah. the museum, but somehow so I think they light the candle. Yeah, isn't there? A, there's. I think if I remember correctly, again, this is a while ago. I think that there's a candle there. They light the candle and basically they bring him back to life. Yeah, and they need the children. See, I was right about that one. <laughs> they need the children. They suck their essence, essence out. out of them in yeah. order to stay young forever. Yeah, yeah. And so they're lur they want to lurk the children back, and they go, yeah. "Sisters, we're back." You know, yeah. I remember. I remember she had this attitude. Yeah. <laughs> they have, they, 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 they have like, a cool song in oh, it too, don't yeah, they? Yeah, like, I put a spin. Yeah, they put it. Put it they put it out at, at, towards the end of the movie, though, when they have like a big Halloween party at like I think it's at the school, and basically the witches basically you know. They perform this song. I put a spin on you, and you see them performing the song, which is really cool, though. Of course, I like the scene, of course, when they uh, when they're trying to like you know when they start flying, you know, in the movie too as well, and they try to grab the broom, and they're like looking for brooms and like the one chick, the, the the big one from uh, Sister Act, she ends up having a vacuum cleaner or something. That's like, like and it starts turning on when she's like flying. Oh right, and she didn't have a broom, so she she starts to fly on this broom. Yeah. Roxanne says it was the brother who 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 turned on this candle, oh, and he was a virgin. That was oh, the like right. a yeah. virgin needed to light that's the candle. Yeah, Thank right. you, Roxanne. Thank you for reminding us. Yeah, sorry about that. Yes, no, no, that's good. I love it when you guys interact. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. No problem. Yeah, but I think it was a really cool scene in the movie too. Of course, I like the scene where we see uh, where we see the witches going to the one house though. We see uh, Gary uh, Gary Marshall and Penny uh, yeah, Penny Marsh, yeah, and stuff like that stuff. And you know, of course, Sarah Jessica Parker is kind of the kind of like, she's kind of the weird, kind of seductive one, of course. She's the sexy one. Yeah. Oh. She was hot in that movie. Oh my God! Yes, she if was. I say so myself. She was. I was like, and then she went plastic surgery, and I'm kind of like, <laughs> oh, too bad. I'm sorry, but that's my personal opinion. Don't, you know, you're good the way you are, okay? You created this body for a reason. <laughs> Embrace it. Love it. Yeah. Sorry, that was just a side note. Go ahead, Henny. Yeah, but it's a, I, I like this movie a lot, though, because it, it really, it's a really a family movie, though, but it's filmed at Halloween time, though. You got witches, them flying, you know, and and they're trying to stop them. These, these kids are basically trying to stop them, basically, for freaking taking over the town and basically, you know, Taking all the children basically in the town, basically, and, and overtaking all of them. I mean, basically, you see them kind of walking through the town, though, and they're like all under this big spell by the witches, though, of course, and they're trying to stop them, though. 
I really like this movie, guys. It's a classic. I think it's a good family movie to watch for the kids and for everyone, I think, though. And, and I think the cast is really amazing, though, too, as well. I, I think The Witches are a fantastic movie. The kid actors are really good in the movie as well, too, of course. And I think the one, the main girl, the, 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 the tall girl in the movie, though, if I remember correctly, I think she played in that movie, what was it, uh, with Josh Hartnett, if I remember correctly, the very, the very tall girl who's kind of interested in the boy who plays the brother. Of course, who's the virgin in the movie? I'm trying to think what movie she was from. I remember her from a movie. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Ladybugs. I remember that. Yeah. Huh? I've never heard of that movie. Yeah, that was Ronnie Dangerfield. And uh, I'm telling you, he's a psychopedia when it comes um, to movies. Jonathan Half Brandon. of the time, he's like, Can you remember this movie? And I'm like, I've never seen it. And she was also in that movie, too, with uh, with uh, with Josh Hartnett, too, where he's like a virgin, where he's like, he's like trying to stop having sex for like 40 days. And oh, plays, and she plays, I remember she, that. And she plays like the ex girlfriend with that. 14 days, yes. nights, or something. Yes, exactly. And that's the that's the girl, the main girl in the movie, actually, though, who plays the love interest of the boy, of course. Yes, I have a great memory when it comes to. Anyway, this. I think this is a great movie for kids because it's got music yeah. in it, it's got song in it. Yeah. And then the parents can't stop dancing at one point. Oh, no. And, you know, these kids are like heroes, and the witches are scary, but not too scary. They're more like fun, I think. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think this is a great movie to watch with the whole family, and even the little kids can enjoy that one. Absolutely. I think so, for 100%. I think it's a very good movie, guys. <laughs> okay, guys. Next one on the list, of course, is the animated film Monster House, which was made in 2006. This is a really good movie. I like this movie. My, my kids, our kids love this movie. Though. Monster House. Oh my god, I've seen it like a million times. Oh, Jesus, like, yeah. I, it's crazy. My kids, especially Leah. Oh, she loves that movie. Leah, my youngest, is obsessed. Oh yeah, with she, this movie. She adores that movie. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I think it's a really good animated film though. It's like, fun though, and it gets that eighties vibe. Yeah, it does. Look at that. It has really that eighties kind of vibe in the film though. And basically, the movie's about the you know, it's about this boy. You know who's right across the street, though. And they have this guy named Never Cracker, who's played by Steve Buscemi, who voices the character Never, Never Cracker in the movie. Mm -hmm. And they say a long time ago, his wife Constance, who's played by the amazing, talented Kathleen Turner in the movie, who does the voice acting for Constance, she basically they try, he basically helps her get out of the circus that she's, she's in. She's kind of like a freak show act. Yeah. I don't circus. know why, but she's in a circus. Yeah. And basically, he helps her get out of the circus, though. He basically takes her away, though. And they try to build their big dream home, of course, in the movie, as you see in the movie. And eventually, she ends up having an accident and dies in the movie, though. But, of course, of course, she never leaves the house. Her spirit though. stays in the house. house, basically, yeah. And basically, the house basically comes back to life. And every, every and Halloween, Halloween, basically, the, the house starts eating children, basically. Which is also kind of, what's the thing about eating children or representing children? What is well, that I guess stuff? that's the scariest thought. <laughs> oh, children being eaten <laughs> alive. Children being eaten she's just a pissed or, off spirit she yeah. really is she, she, she you know I, I guess she was always laughed at and she was you know at the circus they would throw food at her right. and, and 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 so here come these kids and they're throwing stuff at her house so she tries to chase them away with an axe but the axe is too heavy and she kind of falls back into the hole where the there. house is being built and she dies and she decides to stay and and so this man, old man, is trying to keep kids away because he knows that she's dangerous. Yeah. But I, I think the house is really cool because the way it comes to life, though, and it's like an old, rusty kind of old house. And then you see yeah, the house eventually it gets like, up and it leaves, yeah, it, the, leaves its place oh, and it walks yeah. around, tries to catch these kids. And, but at one point, the boy thinks he murdered the man. Yeah, of course, because after that, hits him. He kind of gives him sort of a heart, heart attack. attack. Yeah. And so and he yeah. thinks he killed the man, which he didn't. Of course. But yeah. um, so all of a sudden, that old man who keeps all the kids away is gone in the hospital, and the house starts calling him yeah. and kind of lurking him. And, yeah. and that's where it kind of starts from there. And him and his friend, yeah. they kind of try to. Uh, basically, stop this house from and course, doing what it's and course, doing. And of course, the girl but... who's like a Girl Scout who's selling like, cookies for her thing, though. Basically, she ends up helping him along the way, of course, in the movie as well and stuff. But I really like this movie because it's, fun. it's a really good, fun movie, though. It's like that stuff. And I really like, you know, you have like the babysitter in the movie, though, of course, and her boyfriend, Bones, of course, in the movie. It's like, like, it's amazing, kite, man, and stuff. And you see him, like, <laughs> you see the kite flying, like, 
like red kai and then the house eats him and shit and stuff oh, and then the cops get eaten and, and a lot of people get eaten in the house but eventually they all come up alive at the end which yeah. is good so that's got a good ending yeah but i, I think it has such great scenes in the movie though too of course i guess like it's gonna be a bloodbath and stuff. it just when i watch it it has this 80s vibe kind of like the goonies kind of vibe. yeah yeah kind of like goonies kind of like you know and so i think that's why i like Lost it Boys a little bit yeah, it's, it, it's not like the modern kind no. of movie. Yeah, I think it just has that old vibe, and I love it. Yeah, I, I like the I like the part where we're in the bathroom and her bedroom, and they're like she wants to use her phone though, and like they pee in the bottle, like like, like DJ, like is that you, you? pee in your you, bottle? You pee, you pee in bottles? <laughs> like, like wait a minute, that's your bottle. And so I saw that. Uh 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 uh. But I like the scene with the, I love the scene where, where, where the house comes to life though and starts walking around though and it's trying to eat the kids and stuff that's stuff like that and they're it's pretty intense. It is a very oh my it. god hell yes it is. It's when awesome. you watch it the first time you're like whoa you know this yeah. house is not giving up. No, it's like resistance. But hell. we've seen it a million times so we're kind of like okay. <laughs> but I, I love the cops in the movie too. Of course, yeah, the fat cop it was Kevin James in the movie of course though. Like I was I was like a bear claw get it? Like I was eating a donut. And they had the black yeah, cop. Yeah, like, yeah, they're kind of idiots. And they Corey had the black cop was played by Nick Cannon, of course, and was like, like, the dog would never think so. Like, what'd you say? Like, and they don't believe the kids. Exactly, they don't like believe always. the kids either, of course, and yeah. stuff. But I, I, I really love the movie though. It's, it's a, it's a really fun movie. It's entertaining. It's exciting. It's got great humor in the film as well too. And I think it's just a really good film for children though, and families to watch though. Of course. So, guys, if you've never seen Montauk, I recommend you see it. It's a really good way to watch the families at Halloween Town, of course. It is. I, I think it's one of, cartoon-wise, yeah, absolutely. this is one of the best. Yes, absolutely, guys. For Halloween. Yeah, absolutely. Next. All right, guys. Next on our list, of course, is the movie, of course, Beetlejuice. Of course, it was made in 1988, of course. This is a really cool movie. I like this movie a lot. I was seven years old. Oh god, I was like oh, five. <laughs> I was five years old. I have seen it several times. Oh god, that's it's a great one. It has such a great, amazing cast in the movie, of course. You got Alec Baldwin movie, Gina Davis, who plays the couple who basically, you know, in the movie who basically they they they, they basically die in the house though, basically that they, they own. And basically, you know, they see them dead, basically, and they have basically they kinda get stuck in the house almost basically though, because they basically, you know, Basically, basically, basically. Yeah. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Boy, do I love you. There ain't nobody like you, honey. I knew. I know. Thank you. I don't, I'm trying to think how it went because this is the, I haven't seen this one. Well, basically, long time. Basically, oh, no, they did the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice kind of thing. And then, oof, there he pops up. Yeah, wasn't it right. like that? No, they, 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 they bought, they, they, they owned this house and they died in the house. The couple, Alec Baldwin and Gene Davis, dies in the house, though. And a new couple buys. And a new a new family buys the house, though, of course, which just has Kathleen. With Winona Ryder. Yeah, with Winona Ryder and Kathleen O'Hare, and they buy the house, though, of course, though. And everything like that and stuff. And they find out the house is being haunted by the people that actually used to live there, of course. Right. And that's like that in the movie. Which is Gene Davis and Alec Baldwin, of course, who lived in the movie. And along the way, look, because he had like this, like, this, like, this, like this model kind of like thing of the whole town, though. And there's like a part in the town though that has like this little graveside and it's, it's by Beetlejuice, which is played by Michael Keaton. And Michael Keaton is fantastic in this movie. He's just brilliant. He's fantastic in every movie. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's a really good actor though. I think so. I think so. And eventually, you know, they, they basically ask, you know, basically the, the couple who used to live in the house will ask Beetlejuice to get rid of the previous owners that bought the house now, that are living in it, to get them out of their house because they don't want them there, basically. Oh, right. And of course, and they and they made the call on them, but when they do this, though, they don't realize that the Beetlejuice is kind of a pain in the butt. Basically, he has kind of like his own rules, his own kind of settings. Though, inside like the movie, though, what is he anyway? <sighs> they don't really explain what he is in the movie. Well, but he's, he's kind of like this tormenting ghost. Pretty much, yeah. If, if you kind of, if you really think, like, he really kind of is. He's a pain in the butt, but a funny one. Yeah, he really is, though. He's so great that he's like, like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah. Like, 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 yeah. showtime. Yeah, he has this kind of flair about him, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Yeah, like, the cool. Like, and he becomes friends eventually with a girl, I think. Yeah, he kind of he seduces 
you know, right on the way to help her out, basically, though. But they have no idea. Because he's like little, isn't he? Yeah, he's like little, but when they call Beetle, he becomes bigger. He becomes big. Exactly, That's though. what it is. Exactly, he becomes bigger, though. And eventually, he starts tormenting the, the, the family in the house. They bought the house, of course. But, of course, you have Kathleen O'Hara, though, who's absolutely brilliant in the movies, of course, who plays the mother of <laughs> Lionel Ryder, of course, in the movie, and everything like that. And, and, of course, they have the one great scene in the movie, though, yeah, that's what Rook, that one that you're going to talk about is what Rook's saying is talking about when they're in the waiting room. <laughs> when they're in the waiting room for the dead people. So the couple is going to the, they have to go yeah. into a waiting room. And, yeah. and so does Beetlejuice. And he has to get, they get like a number. Yeah, I know. And it's like 1,200,000. <laughs> <laughs> and there's all these other ghosts sitting next to him in all weird shapes and well, it's really a great movie because it has yeah. so much i like the scene where they have the dinner party of course with captain o'hare and they invite their friends over olaf the big fat chubby dude and like the fucking like kind of spiky looking hair and shit like that stuff i don't know and they have that whole song i then i believe you the line. that's that's a great scene and, then, and like six punch seven foot punch like yeah, they start dancing, but they can't oh. control themselves. Yeah, yeah. there's oh. a lot of fun scenes oh in there, and it's, God. it's just... if you haven't <laughs> seen it, you won't know what we're talking about. But if you have, you know, you'll have great memories of certain scenes in that movie. Oh God, yeah. I like the part where one of the most fun like 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 on the on the on the on the, on the uh, by the stairwell, like up in the line, and I, hey, hey, I believe you, come in the line, up in the Oh yeah, the thing like, oh. It has so many cool scenes in the movie. I the part where he's like you, where he's like where like where, where Al Bowie and Gene Davis go into where Beetlejuice is at though inside of the thing he created, of course, the little town he created, of course. And they basically go inside the thing and like that and stuff. And I the part where his head spins around like that something like that. Where he turns into a snake. Yeah, oh, yeah. Kind of a weird looking striped thing. Uh, uh, I, I like the part where he goes to the, to the goes to the two places. He's like, he's like, hey, 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 like, like, woo-hoo. yeah, he does make some sexual references. Oh, God. this movie is such a great movie, guys. It has such an amazing It's just cast. fun, it's it fun, so it fun. is humor, it oh, is absolutely. scary at times. Yeah, and it just got a great cast as well. So, absolutely, yeah, it's, a it's classic. I mean, there's no, I mean, there's really, if you look at it, there is no other movie that you can compare to Beetlejuice. Oh, no, it's so it is just one of those one of a kind movies, movies. Yeah, yeah. That absolutely. you're either gonna love or you're gonna hate it. It's yeah. one or the other. <laughs> and, and, the, and the weird thing was that, you know, Danny Alper did the music for the movie, of course. Tim Burton wrote the, the, the script for the movie, too, as well, of course. And I think anytime you mix Tim Burton and Danny Alper together, you're gonna make a really special movie though, because those two together really make a great combination and they really know how to blend humor with a dark kind of tone as well really well together though and i think that's what makes the movie kind of special in a way because of that reason too as well but also has a main cast to it which also helps too of course i mean yeah you can't go wrong with winona writer um, i mean and it's tim burton isn't it yeah it's tim burton tim wrote, tim wrote the movie of course i mean I love Tim Burton. He's kind of that dark. He's got that dark and that kind of. Well, Tim Burton really has a thing about work. humor. He really has humor. He really has a thing about working with certain actors. You know, like, like he's just a creative mind, and I, I know I know people who hate his movies, and I know people who love his movies. And my brother was a, is a very creative person. He's an artist, and um, <laughs> so he always loved them. So I I kind of learned to love them with him and. He is just one of those brilliant minds that has that dark twist. He's got a little bit of darkness in his soul, but he uses it in a very creative way. And I think, I think his darkness, his darkness comes from a rejection of society. I think he's very anti-society kind of standard rules, everything the same thing. And you see that in his movies. He makes fun of societal yeah, kind of uh, really. habits and, and routines and patterns. So he really does. He really enjoys to step out of the box oh, and do does. something. So much. So you know, much. Edward Scissorhands is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's just. You know, I mean, that's a great movie to watch for Halloween, too. But anyway, wow. um, left, left Tim Burton, so there yeah. you go. Okay. Although there are a few where I go, oh, Tim, what did you do? Oh, God, yes, absolutely. There's okay, a- everybody has this movie. I love yeah, Steven Spielberg, but every now and then I go, Steven, what did you do? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very, very rich. But course. overall, yeah. great movies. Yeah. And that's one of my guys on my list goes, guys. And, and this is probably a movie that a lot of people don't remember, though, so I, just, I was reminded on my movie group. Just recently, though, about the movie, 
of course. And I loved it. I personally loved it. It is the movie Monster Squad. It was made in 1987. Guys, I love this movie. I grew up watching this movie when I was a kid. I was a huge fan of this film, though. I owned it. I had it on VHS, though. When I was a kid, though, and I always put it in my VHS when I was a child watching the movie. And I used to watch this movie like almost like every Halloween. I loved it so much. She doesn't like this movie. I love much, but it's such a I, good movie. I think movie. it's a nostalgia thing for you. Oh, I never saw it as a kid. I never saw it as a kid. A kid and and so I, for, I saw it for the first time with Gerald. Because he's like, you've never seen it? You have to see it. And if you I don't know. It just, for me, it was kind of silly. But that's what? just my opinion. This movie is just... I, we can have a different opinion. I, I love the Monster Squad because why the Monster Squad really, to me, this is a really good family movie, though, because, all that stuff, because it really has everything in it, though. You have Dracula, you have the werewolf, the mummy, of course, the movie, Frankenstein, you know, and, and stuff. It just it has all those monster characters we remember when we were kids, though, and stuff like that, and stuff, going back in the old days, back to those really old films. It has it in, these, in this movie, though, which I love, though, of course. It's just fantastic, though. I love I love the Dracula in the movie. I love the werewolf. I love the Frank the Frankenstein is kind of really humanized basically though in, in the movie though. And then and I really love them. I love the kid actors in the movie, of course. The kid actors are just brilliant in the movie though. I mean, this movie is just it's one of those movies, you know, it's just really you get the really feeling of that nostalgia. And you really get that, that really that sense of, you know, it, 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 there's some there's some really scary moments in the movie though, of course. So I love this movie, you know, you see where uh, the dad, of course, who's the cop. Of the one boy who's a part in the Monster Squad, of course, because the Monster Squad is a bunch of kids basically, who basically you know hunt down monsters basically. But when they realize though that some of these monsters are actually really alive, and the first one they actually meet in the movie is Frankenstein, of course, because Dracula decides to bring Frankenstein back to life in the movie, of course, and it's like that because apparently they needed this, uh, this amulet, of course, which was uh, which was from a long, long time ago, and everything like that. So they bring Frankenstein back to life though, and basically Dracula tells Frankenstein. To kill the children, basically, you know, something like that stuff. The Monster Squad and everything like that. And the Monster Squad basically takes the takes the kids and basically helps the children, basically, though. But the, the but Frankenstein is really attached to the little girl, though, who plays, uh, who's a little girl with a very young girl. I think she's maybe seven or eight years old in this freaking movie, I think, though, as well. And she is the uh, sister of the brother who is the leader of the Monster Squad. And his dad is a cop in the movie, of course. You know, and his dad, you know, his, and his dad is kind of, you know, he's, He's trying to do the right thing. He's like really, really straight arrow. And he kind of has some issues with his wife, of course, and everything like the movie as well. Yeah. Ah, yeah. And everything like that. But yeah, this is a really great movie because every character is so kid. They have this, like, they have this one kid who's flat, fat, and they call him Fat Kid, of course, in the movie because he's kind of big bone. Well, that, that, so mean. Well, that's, that's his name. It's called, they call him Fat Kid. And it's like that stuff. Back then, this is the where, the where people could still smoke in movies. Yeah, <laughs> Keep and I love mind. the I love the I love the teenage character in the movie too. Of course, his name is Rudy though. He's really cool. He's like the jacket and the slick old hair and the, the blue jeans like right up to here and all inside that stuff. And he's smoking a cigarette and all that stuff. He got these like black leather gloves. He's like one of the coolest characters in the movie. It's like sometimes though, I love the scene in the movie like like you got can bars like that and stuff. Eat it. But I don't want to eat it. Like we'll call it a day. And stuff. But he is so cool in the movie. He's like a total badass. I love his character in the movie, though. And it's like stuff. But it's such a great movie, though, because there's so many good scenes in the movie. Mm -hmm. I like the part where, where, the, where, the, where the cop, uh, where uh, the cop uh, of the kid uh, battles the werewolf, though. And it's like that and stuff. And he puts like a dynamite in him and he blows up the werewolf and something. And, and like, 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 the werewolf doesn't have nards. Kick him in the nards. Kick him in the nards. And like, Wolfman's got nards. I love this movie. This movie is so so good. I mean, every time I know he really enjoys. It. I I enjoy this movie so much because it's really it's a great movie for kids. If you love monsters, if you love kid actors, because it's really for all ages, from anyone from like seven all the way to an adult. You feel for the kids, and it's got some really skinny in my point. I like the part where freaking uh, you see all the witches like the vampires, like those. So that's because Jack always had like you know those three kind of witches. witches he kind of turns into it vampire basically. And he's even who though like this, and it was like you know in a damn club, right? It's like that stuff and stuff like that stuff. And it's like this is like it's like he's like trying to shoot the bow and arrow like it's like ah oh, awesome scene of the movie ah. Oh. This is funny. And I, I like to see with the mummy too, of course. And the mummy when the mummy jumps on the truck and they're trying to run like that, and the truck and all the kids go, and the mummy like and the mummy comes un, undone, everything like that. Ah. Oh. 
Lord. This movie is, I love this movie, guys. If you guys have never seen Modern Squad, I recommend you see it, though. It's a really, really good movie. It has a really cool poster for it, too, as well, too, as well. You see all the monitors in the background and then the kids on the, uh, down below and sit on the car, though. Oh, this movie if is If you amazing. haven't seen it, go see it for yourself. Yeah. And then we're divided on this one, so you decide for yourself. Next. Not next. <laughs> And the next one, of course, is the 1996 movie, of course, The Frighteners. Now, I like this movie, though, when it's like that stuff, because it, 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 is, it is considered a rated R film. But it's for me, really not that bad. it's really not that bad of a movie as it, it, like that stuff. Because when I saw it, I don't think it was maybe, like, maybe 13 when this movie came out, but I love this movie, though. Of course, Michael J. Fox, of course, plays the main character, Frank Bannister. And basically, one time he uh, basically how the story goes basically in the movie is that he is just a normal like uh, he's like an architect though, and one day him and his wife are driving of course and like that and everything, and all of a sudden he gets in a car accident and the wife dies in the car accident of course, and eventually when his wife dies in a car accident all of a sudden he gets like these kind of like these like these clairvoyant powers though. Yeah, he, he starts is, to become a medium. Like, he amazing. starts to yeah. see dead people. Exactly, of course. Like, but he lost his wife, but he doesn't he doesn't ever see his wife, no, which he is weird. Yeah, so he really becomes. Weird. Clairvoyant, but his wife never really reaches out, which I thought oh, was always kind of sad. Yeah, of course, yeah, I think, <laughs> of course. But what I love about what I love about this movie though is like that stuff. And then basically, he starts seeing these ghosts, and these two ghosts. There's like a white guy, of course, who has glasses, kind of nerdy, and they have kind of the black guy is kind of like more kind of like they kind of like the goofy. But they're goofy ghosts, though. They're really goofy though. These <laughs> ghosts. They're all very different. Yeah. One's from like the 70s. Yeah. And then one's like an old cowboy. Yeah. And then there's like a military dude in there. Yeah, the guy from Full Metal Jack. Yeah, the guy from Emily. Full Metal yeah. Jack. Yeah, yeah he's, and, he's, and, he's great in the movie, of course. But he's a big actor, though, of course. He plays also well. Yeah, I like this movie, guys. And basically, he basically start, He basically uses these two ghosts, basically, to basically, you know, cleanse people's houses, though. But he uses the ghosts, basically, to haunt people in the house, <laughs> no. though. He's a con artist. The guy's he's, literally a con artist. He's he's a real medium. Yeah. But he makes artist. deals with spirits to haunt houses. Exactly. He's a con artist. He's and, a con artist medium, though. Even though he has the ability. And Go then, figure. So he basically sends these ghosts into a house. They scare the living daylights out of the people. <coughs> and he turns up to be the hero. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and gets paid. But really, their house wasn't wasn't haunted to begin with. It's just his spirits that are doing it. Exactly. So it's kind of a, I mean, wow. I'm not even going to talk about wow. <laughs> I wish I would have come up with that. <laughs> just joking. No. Honey. No, but it's funny. Yeah. Isn't that funny? I mean, can you imagine? Yeah, true. If I would go and tell these spirits, but you know, you can't tell spirits what to do, so that would be a no no. But, that makes movies but that's kind of funny because these spirits are like, they're kind of stuck to earth, aren't yeah, they? they? They're right. not, they didn't really transition. No. They're all stuck on earth. Yeah. And he kind of uses them to his own advantage to make money. But, much but all of a sudden, there's this soul reaper. Yeah. Kind of, yeah kind of that's coming and wants to literally take them all out yeah and but it's like they disappear or something or at least that's what they say in the movie well what he does is he he, he, he grabs he kills them he kills me he grabs them and reaches out their souls and pulls their soul pulls like their this souls out. like this like that stuff like that stuff and it was like a cool scene in the bathroom with michael j fox was running to the bathroom and there's just, <laughs> this kind of like this guy in the suit and stuff and this grimmer comes out and he just pulls us away out of the mirror and, yeah, he like pulls soul. people's souls because he's kind of like a negative spirit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you kind of see like the, the the spirit basically go up and they see like this light come out and the light and they basically see them and they see this light, and they see the guy say "Mama" and he goes Whoop. "Yeah." You know, it's yeah. There's some scary bits in the absolutely. movie, this you is... know. And eventually, there's also a girl that he starts liking. Yeah. And because uh, there's like a spirit in the house as well, and she, I think she invites him in to help him out. But it, this is a whole different spirit. Yeah. You know, this is kind of a person who enjoys hurting people and who literally stays on earth to torture people and hurt people. And and he has this relationship with the lady with a girl that or an older lady that's in the house yeah and at first she's all like oh i'm scared I'm because, scared. Her husband, because her husband, she, she was in relationship with somebody and the, and the guy that dies though 
It's her husband. Yeah. Oh, right. And yeah. he abused her and things like that. He, he was wasn't. mean to her, but then it turns out that she was actually helping him. So, yeah. So it's kind of a little twist at the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a good. Well, I, what I really like about the movie is it, it just has this really cool. It has, it has a really dark comedy, really dark humor. But it has really some scary moments in the movie, too, as well, of course, all. And stuff like that, you know, where they see. You know, where he sees some of his, where he sees all some of the ghosts that actually help him, though, get killed as well by this Green Reaper, too, as well. But it's not, there's no blood, there's no, no gore. No. It really is transparent people yeah. who look a little off. Yeah. Um, you know, when they die, they just kind of vanish and disappear. So it's, uh, it's scary, but I think to my feeling families can watch this as well well i think what makes it there is violence in it that's why it's rated r that's the only reason is violence because there is some people shooting guns and stuff but yeah i mean nowadays kids see more gruesome things in their video games than they will ever oh, see God, in this yes, movie absolutely so, very true so i you know although it's rated r i, I don't think it should be no, but the, um, the, the, the course of all the way, they, the course opinion. of the way they, 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 of course they found out that the, the Grim Reaper though is actually a serial killer. Actually, though, and like in the movie though, they found out the guy killing all of them because he car when he kills each one of them, he carves their names in their heads though. Basically, each one of their victims, he carves their names in their heads. Yeah, it's like see. a serial killer that enjoys that enjoys Taking his job, yeah. and and that's you know you see that a lot in, in spirits. When they enjoy killing people, usually their spirits won't transition because no. they want to continue to do what they do. Only this yeah. time, they can take on different forms and different shapes and yeah. and, and move in a very different way. And of course, of course, of course, there's the one lady though, basically, who helps them in the movie too. Of course, who like is kind of this twisted kind of girlfriend though, basically in the movie though, of course, and like that stuff. Who lives in the house, of course, like that, and she's kind of like like way out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's I love it. It's this. a good movie, and I mean, it's got Michael J. Fox in it. Need I say more? And believe it or not, this movie, believe it or not, this movie was directed by Peter Jackson, though, too. And well. didn't do well in the box office, I which know. I do not understand. It actually lost money. I know, seriously. I'm like, really? And I look at that movie, and I'm going, this is a great movie. It is a great so movie. So I don't know what, what it's, happens for me, there, for but for, I think for, it's for a great me, movie. I think it's a very underrated movie. It I is. I think it's an extremely underrated movie. It right needs now. to get some love from us. It does. Absolutely. There we go. So to me, I love that movie. I think it's a great movie. It very is, guys. Okay, guys, the next one on our list, of course, is the 1982 horror classic, which is Poltergeist, of course. Guys, I know a lot of people know this, but this movie is a classic, though. It is a movie that has stood for, like, generations. They made, they made three of these movies, actually, though, of course. Everything. It, it is kind of scary. It is a little bit scarier. But with a good pillow... <sighs> I think even younger children might be able to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I love this movie though, guys. It's by it's by a family who buys this house though, because the dad, like Dean Nelson, who's a real estate agent, of course, they decide to buy the house, of course. But what they don't realize is the house is buried on a graveyard, basically, and they don't realize that though. It's all like that, of course, in the movie. And basically, this house basically starts getting haunted by basically poltergeist, basically, in the movie. And then, of course, you see the little girl, the blonde haired girl, of course, and she looks at the tells that they're here oh every time you know what though do you know what the scariest part is about that movie what happened after the movie oh yeah yeah there's this whole thing where all of the people who worked on the movie died in some mysterious way a couple of them did yeah the, the, the even the little girl yeah the little girl she died at a very young age actually so we need to i need to ask eric someday about that anyway continue that just popped in my head that, that that was a mysterious thing. Yeah, basically, along the way, you start seeing the polar guys kind of start messing with the kids and the family, though, of course. They start messing with the polar guys, messing with a little boy or two, of course. Where you see, like, in the scene movie, the boy is like, you know, he has like this clown that's in his room, though. And eventually, the clown pulls him out of his, out from under his bed. <laughs> I hate it that bit. Uh, I'm terrified of clowns. And I'll then, tell you the story later. And basically, and basically, the clown freaking starts choking the boy. Though, and like, <laughs> and basically, along the way, the family gets so terrified, though, because the girl, the main girl with the bond, of course, she gets taken She gets taken into the other uh, dimension of the world by the polar guys, though. And it's up to the family to try and save her, though. So they bring these experts in to help her, of course. Of course, they had that little short lady, though, with the glasses. Though. I don't remember her name, though, of course. And so, That's okay. I don't really remember her name though. 
but she's like kind of like a kind of like a medium or something like that and stuff like that. Of course, I think that, and they'd be like these specialists who kind of help them out. Wasn't basically. she like a real medium though? I, I think so. Yeah, I, I, I remember. Me. I remember she is this short little lady, and yeah. she. I think she's a real medium. I think so. Yeah, from and she yeah. helps the FBI solve murder cases, and they used her in this movie. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, from yeah. Mer America, yeah. And basically, of course, she's about there to help them get rid of the polar guys and try to get the girl back, though. But you see a lot of cool scenes in the movie, even with the mother, with Joy Beth Williams. Oh, she's fantastic in the movie, of course, guys. I love her in this movie. She plays the mom, of course, of the little girl in the movie, of course. And she's basically, you know, trying to get her baby back, like that stuff. There's so many intense moments in the scene in this movie, though, guys. And then you start seeing, like, you know, they start realizing the graves start, the graves start popping up out of the house, of course, and shit. And that's really good. They're like, Oh my god! And then, like we'll see whether with I think it's oh. a pretty scary movie. But where did this movie? Where did this movie rated PG action? Well, nobody really dies, which no. is good. No. Um, for children, but um, yeah, I I thought it was scary, and I think looking at it as a mother, oh, um, it scared me even more because, <laughs> and I didn't see this movie till late. I mean, till I met Gerald later on, because. As a kid, I never watched scary movies. My parents don't watch scary movies. So uh, we never were allowed to, and we never really watched. He watched them since he was a kid, yeah. which, is, which like, makes me question their parent skills. But um, <laughs> I'm sorry you don't watch that scary stuff when yeah. you're five. But, um, but you know, uh, as a mother, you see this. She's desperate, and she's, she doesn't know what to do, and you can see. She, you can see her pain and you can see her frustration and she's yeah. just trying to get her child back. Yeah. That was basically taken into yeah. this kind of other dimension, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because eventually they find a way to get in there. And I think yeah. it's in the closet, if I remember correctly. Yeah. They find a way to kind of go into that dimension. Yeah. You know, and try and grab them and then they pull them back. But the, but the, special, scary. But the special effects in the movie, are, uh, the special effects are really good in this movie too for a, for a movie made at that time period though. Such great special effects though. I mean, just super well done though. And just the performances, the acting you know, in this movie is just incredible too from start to finish. And the movie really leaves you, you know, on the edge of the entire film, though, really, it really, really does. Of course, they made sequels, too, of course. The sequels weren't as great as the original. The original one is the best one. The original one's a classic, of course. I love it, of course. And... Hi, Tiff! Who's that, Chanjina? Oh, okay. Roxanne says I should interview the girl of the poltergeist, yeah, because she died Hi. very shortly after that movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Well, let's send out an invitation. Let's send out an intent. Well, maybe, right, maybe she will respond. But good movie. The ending is scary, I think. Because oh. then you see all these graves. And oh, that's, I love that scene. Let's, let's not spoil it. Yeah. But great ending. Uh, but still manageable for for families, I think. And Steven Spielberg wrote the script for this movie, too, as well. <gasps> he did. Yes, he did. Did not know that. Yeah, he wrote the script for this movie, though, of course. But, you know, Steven Spielberg, he had hands. So many of those great, iconic movies. Back, whether he directed it or he wrote it. Exactly the producer though, but he he always had a hand in all most almost almost really almost every age film we can hard think of back in this. He probably had a hand in it somewhere. He's a genius. Another. He what was. Can we say he is a genius though, guys. So the Poltergeist. If you yeah. haven't seen it, go check it out. I recommend you see guys. It's a classic. Though. It's definitely a classic. Okay, guys. Another one on the list, of course, is the movie from 1995, Casper, the Friendly Ghost. I remember seeing this movie when I was a kid, though, actually, though, and I really liked it, actually. I thought it was really I funny. I liked it, too, at the time, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it was, it's kind of a friendly ghost, though. Yeah, yeah. It's I love this movie, though, guys. It's such a good movie, though. It's a really good family movie, though, because basically it's about, you know, this, you know, this boy. Well, it's about this girl. It's about, the, about, about Bill Pullman and his daughter, of course. They decide to move to this town, though, because their mother, of course, had passed a long way a long time ago. And, they and decide, he wants to, he's kind of, Trying to connect to his spirits. Spirit. He's trying to connect to his wife though, because he wants to freaking find and to spirits. He's yeah. trying to find some kind of evidence of spiritual yeah. communication. So he goes to all these places where people say it's haunted, but yeah. most of the time it turns it's, out it's, it's really not, nothing. No, of course. And these this couple inherits a house. Yeah. Right. Well. well, 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 well. Yes, this other couple inherits a house, and there's supposed to be some kind of treasure in it. Yeah. But there's 
Well, they're, 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 they're not really a couple. They're like they're like kind of like. Oh yeah, no. Well, I mean a couple. I mean a man. There's a man and there's a woman. Okay, you do the talking. <laughs> Well, they decide, they, they, they decide to move to this little small town, of course. Bill Pullman is our course. Christine Ricci, of course, again, Christine Ricci again. No, they didn't decide. They were invited by that. Yeah, they were invited by the family, basically, though, to basically discover, you know, and they decide to move the house, all right? And they, and they figured, okay, you know, what's in this house? And they start discovering that there's an actual real-life ghost in this house, of course. Yeah, that's why they were invited. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're trying to find this treasure a, yeah, inside the, the house. house. Yeah. But the problem is the person, they, they hired a medium to go in there, yeah. and he starts to run out yeah. and these, because these ghosts are literally torturing him and, yeah, and they're yeah. kicking him out. So yeah. they, they invite this guy with his daughter in who yeah. claims he wants to talk to spirits yeah. uh, to try and get rid of the spirits so they can go and look for the treasure in the house that they have just inherited. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but I love this one guy has like it has a lot of cool. I love the ghosts in the movie. And so they go and they try to and they find out that these ghosts are really they real. Are, exactly. Well, I I actually love this movie because the ghosts are just hilarious. They're, They're funny. funny. <laughs> I like I like the part where he where he finally that they actually ever goes on the half and starts they start battling the book like this like on guard. Like, he tries to vacuum them up. <laughs> ah, and they go, ah, ah, ah and then they just come back out. <laughs> They basically make fun of them, oh. of the living, and they try to scare them off, uh. but they don't. They they don't ma they don't manage to do so. He's sticking around. He's sticking around. And of and, course, one of the ghosts, and Casper is course, the friendly one. Casper's the friendly one, of course. In the movie, of course, he has to be be taller than the three ghosts, of course, so because they kind of rule everything in the household. And Casper, they're bullies. They're basically bullies. They kind of bully Casper, of course, along the way in the movie, of course. But then Christy and Richie kind of like, you know, she meets Casper, of course, in the movie. And she kind of like builds like this kind of friendship with him basically in the movie as well, too. And they start really getting attached to the ghost. And they start really learning to connect with and start learning to, you know, really be one with the ghost inside the house basically along the way, though. But then, you know, of course, the, one, the course of dad, of course, he's still struggling because he lost his wife, though, of course. And he really wants to connect with her. But he can't seem to be able to connect with her anymore, though. So the ghost kind of try and help him, though, but they kind of make fun of him a little bit though they kind of tease him a little bit and they kind of play a trick on him though too as well in the movie of course they all end up being friends exactly basically. so that's the good part and they actually do him a favor at the end yeah his deceased wife steps forward yeah and he gets to have a last conversation with her from heaven yeah that's it's it's a good feel movie i think it's a good feel movie well Casper, well, Casper it's basically funny. Well, well, well Casper gets goes to turn into a real boy though too as well by the mother for a little bit for a little bit, for a short time period, though, of course. Because he had never kissed a girl yeah, before. Yeah, I know. I felt so, so bad, bad for Casper. And then he turns into this wonderful boy, and I, as a young girl, was like, oh, he's gorgeous. And the weird thing is, he was a good-looking kid. <laughs> well, the, the weird thing was, the weird thing was, when you find out the treasure in the movie, the, oh, the treasure in the movie is just a baseball. It's just a baseball his dad gave him when he was a kid, though. Yeah, that's that the treasure. was important to him, yeah, um, yeah. and it, it really hold, held him emotional value. Exactly. Of there was really no money treasure. Yeah, but then it was really cool when she was at the Hollywood party, and he's dancing with her, and they start kind of floating in the air a little bit. In the movie, yeah, though. and everybody's like, huh? Oh. Uh, and then, of course, you see him, and he's kissing me, like, he's like, he's like, and all of a sudden he starts turning back into the ghost. Or something. He's like, he's like, he becomes transparent again. Like, you're like, that's a good scene, though. That is a great scene. That That's is a, a good scene. That is a, I, I like this movie. It's guy. a good, fun it's a, kids movie. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good movie for the family, though, of course. So, and of course, it has a guy from Monty Python. And it came from a cartoon, didn't it? Uh, yeah, they make I used to watch Casper the Friendly Ghost in a cartoon version, and then they, well, they made into they a movie. Made, they made cartoons off of it, like anime and stuff off of it, too, as well. They did a lot of different things with Casper already, though, as well, too, though. But I like the movie. It's a good family movie for the kids, though. So we've got another movie. Can cover. I keep you? Yes. Gia Myers. Yeah. Devon Sawa. Can I keep Was you? Was that his name? Yeah, Devon Sawa. Sawa. He, played, he was cute. And he also played in the movie. A little, I'm little, sorry, I'm a girl. He also played in the movie too, of course, um, Little Giants, of course, when he was also too with Rick a long time ago too. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he was like, he was like, can I keep you? Can I keep oh, you? Oh man, my heart was like, <laughs> <laughs> when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, so but cute. I, but one of the things I like the movie though, where he finally gets to meet his wife though, that's a really good scene in the movie. I though. cried during that scene when yeah, he gets to see his, his, his deceased wife and he yeah. gets to talk to her and he's like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, and she says you're doing fine. Yeah. And, and oh, that was 
That made me cry. The first I time know. I saw it, that scene made me cry. Yeah, that was a really good scene in the movie. I, I like this movie. I think it's a it really a good, good movie. It is, though, guys. That's the list. And, guys, we're getting down to the last one. Before we get to the last one, I'm going to give you a couple honorable mentions, though, that are probably not in this top mm -hmm. ten, of course. One of the honorable mentions, of course, is Ernest Scared Stupid, of course. That's one of the honorable mentions. I really like that movie, though. But it's an honorable mention, of course. And another one is an old classic from a long time ago, guys. Is, is Young Frankenstein, which was a Mel Brooks movie with Gene Wilder, of course. I don't remember that movie, of course. It's I a don't. black and white movie. It's, I mean, it's Gene Wilder and Young. He just, and his Igor is hilarious. And you got Terry Garner. It it's Peter got Boyle. some adult parts in it, I think, but yeah, I think it's, it's good, just funny. It's a really good movie. Yeah. But the last. And the Ernest movie, I don't remember it very much. Oh. I remember it had a troll in it. Am I right or is it wrong? Am I wrong? Yes, they had a troll in the movie, honey. Yes. Right? They had yes. a troll in it. Yes. It's, he's deceased too, Eric says in my head. Is he deceased? Is yes. Ernest deceased? Yes, Tim Varney they died. Yes. I just heard Eric say, he's over here. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> I, I always liked his movies, Ernest. I yeah, he was just funny and goofy. Oh, he was. Okay. He was just. He was like a big kid. He was. That's the, that's the honorable mention, of course, guys. And we're going to get to the last one, of course. You guys probably all know it. And so it is, of course, The Nightmare Before Christmas, guys, of course, which was made in 1993, of course, guys. Which leans between Christmas, Christmas movie and, and Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. We were kind of like, is it a Halloween movie or a Christmas, Christmas movie? movie? But I, I think it's more Halloween movie because they sing. It's Halloween. 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 Isn't that a Tim Burton movie too? Yes, Tim Burton again. Tim Burton again. I, it's one of those movies that's very unique, I think. It is a very unique movie, though. It's like it's a, it's a very, it's very. The Corpse's Bride is another great Tim Burton kind of Halloween movie that I, it just popped into my head. Yeah. That would have been a good one. And if you look at that main character of the corpses, right? That is my brother. He does look like a brother. Oh my god. He looks Seriously. identical like my brother. And my brother always wanted to draw for Tim Burton. My brother's an artist, a drawer. And ah. I saw that as a sign, like one day you're gonna work for Tim Burton, but it hasn't happened yet. Who knows? Yeah, but I think it's a great movie though. It's a really fantastic movie. It has like Really, it's really good animation though. It's fantastic animation. You know, it's got a lot of music. It is kind of musical. It is very if musical. If you like musical kind of, yeah, there's a lot of songs. There is a lot of songs, which sometimes it. annoy me. <laughs> I have to be honest. This is, I don't lie. I am an honest person. There are parts where I go, just stop singing. But the overall movie, I do like. Yeah, it's a because it's with Jack Skeleton. Yeah, Jack Skeleton. I mean, and if you look at it now, yeah. That character still today yeah. sells yeah. tons of stuff. Yeah, they make t-shirts and mugs and, and uh, Christmas ornaments. And oh god, yeah. Jack Skeleton is one of those characters. It's, it's, it's iconic. It's iconic. He's iconic. He really is, though. But you can understand his iconic because his kind of his demeanor in the movie, his quirkiness in the film, though. Yeah, it's like Stickman. Yeah, it's Stickman. So, and then of course we see him have the Santa Claus outfit on. He's like trying to drive the Santa Claus sleigh for that thumbs. Which I think is a really cool scene in the movie, of course, as well. And what was the principle of the movie again? He wants to be as loved uh, as Santa is. So yes. he literally steals Santa's, Santa's sleigh. But he tries to give gifts of Halloween, mm, which yeah. is kind of like kids are like, what the heck is this? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, I mean, he just wants to be loved. Uh, exactly. You know? Exactly. I mean, what's, what's there not to love? He Absolutely. just wanted to be loved. But I, I think it's. I think it makes the movie such a great movie because you have all these weird kind of creatures in the movie, of course. Of course <laughs> one with like heads like this and stuff like that. And like, oh. Yeah, there you got the Halloween monsters. And yeah. They're all very unique and they're all, I don't know. They're all. They special. All, yeah, they're all special and they all have their own kind of um, personalities. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I think that make I think what makes it such a really a special movie though stuff and and you kind of see it's, it's it's really a movie that's really held up really well through time for that movie as well too though you know no matter how long time goes by though stuff the more you keep watching those stuff the more you go back and keep watching though it's, it is it is it stays with you though mm. it really does though and you know and I think it's with and of course you know Tim Burton and Danny Elfman you know when you combine those two together and it's like that and stuff. This is, for me, this is when Tim Burton and Danny Elf were the best when they're making movies like this, of course. You know, when they when those two work together make movies like this, of course, and stuff, I think it makes it really special, even more because of that reason. Yeah, it, it is a special movie. And 
I think what's fun about it is again, it's a town. It's kind of like a, the Adams family. It's a town where we look at him and we go, "Wow, those guys are weird and, yeah. and freaky looking," and they're just this is their normal thing for. Them. <laughs> so that's a great movie. I think another one that you should put on your honorable oh, mentions there we go, there we go. is what's Leah's favorite movie at the moment. Coco? Coco. You guys seen Coco? Okay, Coco, I think it's about Halloween because it's on Halloween, but it's, uh, what is it? The Day of the Dead yeah. in Mexico is the day where the dead, according to the movie Coco, can cross the veil and come and spend time with their family yeah. and the living will offer food and everything that they liked. And it is really about kind of showing the Mexican tradition yeah. of Halloween, of All Saints, of whatever you want to call it. But it's about this little boy who wants to sing. And um, he literally, his family is against anti-music. Music. Yeah. music destroyed their family a long time ago. Something happened. Music destroyed a family. Music is no longer allowed in the family, and it's kind of fun to see the family dynamics. And the grandmother is hilarious. And yeah. there's he has a great grandmother called Coco, who's kind of going into dementia, not really doing much, but he loves her very much. And then one day he gets mad on the Day of the Dead, and he wants to sing. Yeah. And um, so he goes into a place where he steals a guitar. Which and was, because he which, stole from the which, dead. Which, 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 which was by his idol, of course. So. Yeah, it was his idol. And he thought that was his grandfather that was long yeah. time ago uh, rejected by the family. Because yeah, he left for his music and never came back. Yeah. Um, and so he steals the guitar. But you're not allowed to steal from the dead. Yeah. No, you can't. No. So it turns out he steals the guitar. He becomes transparent. Yeah. And all the dead can see him. Yeah. and. They're kind of funny looking, kind of like me. Um, <laughs> You're always funny looking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they look all, but um, he finds his family on the other side and they try to help him, but he runs. And it's a great story. It's a fun story. There's some great music. I, I oh, love yeah. that music yeah. in the movie. I also remember me. Yeah. yeah. No, I tried to I say goodbye. <laughs> it's a great song. But Coco is great, and, and there's yeah. a scene in the movie which really kind of moved me because literally the, the, the belief there is that you need to put your, your deceased family's picture on an offerendum, yeah. right, or yeah. something like that. It, like, yeah. it needs to be set out, otherwise they cannot cross to come and see you. Yeah. And so when they uh, are no longer remembered on earth, in the living, when when nobody in the that's alive remembers them, they disappear. They disappear. Yep. And I'm gonna share something with you that might seem scary, but it's really not. But literally, you know, you have your higher self. Your, that is the collective of who you are. That is your truest self. Okay. That is who you are in your core being. And then we choose to create these incarnations. Now, every incarnation is an aspect of that higher self, but that aspect has a personality, has a way of thinking, has memories and experiences that is a part of the higher self, but at the same time also uh, separate on a different dimensional level, on a different frequency. Mm. And so when <coughs> people remember you, that that aspect of your human self continuously receives an invitation and kind of attention and energy to continuously to 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 kind of connect with you you're thinking of your deceased loved one boom that deceased loved one is instantly connected to you now when it gets to a point according to the movie uh, and and it, to a degree, that is correct, according to Eric, but not. it's hard to comprehend from a human well, perspective. Well, of course it is. Always a but when you no longer are uh, remembered in life, um, you don't 
you know, they say in the movie, you disappear. And the, the boy asks, sure, where do they go? Yeah. And he says, I don't know. Yeah. And according to Eric, when you get into a timeline, a human timeline where you are no longer remembered, you, your, that little essence of your human, that human essence of you is really no longer uh, being fed with energy. No. So it merges together with the higher self, with the collective of you. Okay, now that doesn't mean you've disappeared, but it means that it no longer needs to be separated in a different frequency, no longer needs to be present in a different frequency to be able to communicate with the people who are alive. But it kind of melts together and joins together with the higher vibration. So you don't disappear, uh, or that aspect of you doesn't disappear, but it actually merges together with the wholeness of you. Um, but again, it's, it's hard to comprehend that from a human perspective because we identify with this body. We identify yeah, we with really this, this persona that we are. This is us. But it's only an aspect of you. It's only a sliver of who you really are. And so that little sliver just merges back with the completeness of you um, should you no longer be requested to come and visit Earth. Um, and so kind of that, that is kind of shown in that movie to a yeah. degree, yeah. Um, which is something I didn't know happened. But eventually when on earth you're no longer fed to be, yeah. to be connected with, then you, your, that presence is no longer necessary in those lower dimensions. So you move into the higher dimension of your higher self because, Again, complicated, but we live in a multi-dimensional universe with different frequencies. So the aspects of you can be present in different frequencies and still be part of the collective of you. So again, very complicated and hard to comprehend, something we won't fully understand until we go home. But to a degree, that disappearance of you in a way, it's not really you, but that little sliver of you uh, does merge with a higher entity with your complete self so that was something i'd never seen before in a cartoon yeah yeah so it's an interesting movie coco because it's it really is a fun way of looking at heaven it yeah, really yes. they also talk about um they have a different name for them but a, yeah. a spirit guides and spirit animals and yeah. everybody has one and yeah. he has a dog uh that's his spirit animal and he's funny and you know it's kind just a really too. it's funny and stupid and but it's it's a really emotional movie it because he really eventually awesome. finds out that the one guy he thought was his grandfather Isn't. is not his grandfather at all no. and actually murdered his grandfather yeah, I did. and the guy he's been hanging out with who's really kind of a klutz yeah, really a klutz, and, yeah. and really nobody wants him and he's rejected and My he doesn't have any friends and the guy, that guy turns out to be his grandfather and loves him very dearly because his heart is in the right place. He's really a good, good person really is, yeah. who is misunderstood. And the guy who's famous and gets all the glory, he turns out to be the murderer. So yeah, and he stole all his songs and benefited from his from the music of the his friends that he murdered. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, it's got a little twist at the end, yeah, but it it, I think it's a great, great oh, yeah. movie. I think it's a fantastic movie. And I, I really like, what I like about the movie Call of Duty too is always is that you really, I think you really get the emotions in the movie as well. I think it's really appealing though. I think the way it's filmed as well too, I think it has really good music in the film as well too. And I like the parts where you really, it's, it's really colorful too. It's very vibrant. It's very, very colorful. colorful. Very Heaven vibrant. is very colorful, colorful. according right. to the movie. <laughs> But it's and the characters are real fun. Oh, absolutely, they? yeah, absolutely, yeah. Characters are fun. Music is great, and I love kind of the idea, their idea of heaven. Yeah. It's basically everybody continues their journey, they continues living like we are on Earth, but just in kind of different ways. They no longer have bathrooms, which is funny because he's like, I have to go to the bathroom, but he's just using it as an excuse to escape. And and this one skeleton is looking at the other one and going, should we say there are no bathrooms here? You know, they don't need to eat. They don't need to go to the bathroom. They don't need to sleep. 
Um, and so it does get exciting at the end because yeah. he needs to return yeah. Yeah. to the living. He needs to get for, he needs to receive forgiveness yes. yeah, he does. from his family in order to return back to the living really? because he starts to yeah. disappear and yeah. turn into a skeleton himself. So, yeah. so it does get exciting at the end and he really wants to remember his grandfather because his grandfather is starting to disappear as well because Coco, the daughter of his great grandfather, um, is starting to forget about him yeah, and she yes. was the only one who knew him in that lifetime and when she forgets completely yeah, he does. disappears yeah, he does. so he's trying really hard to get his picture that, take it back to ooh, the other side yeah, so he can yeah. put it um, on the ofrenda so yeah. he can cross over and, and not disappear yeah. so it, it's a very exciting movie, it is a good movie. but at it. the same time very emotional, it's very emotional yeah. beautiful music it is it is and it's it's about heaven and it's yeah. about death and it's about yeah. a lot of fun well, spiritual I think what, things I, I think one important thing about one i think one of the biggest poor men was is learning to accept each other for who and what you are though because that's what his parents had a hard time saying they, they couldn't accept that he wanted to be a musician though you know and eventually they learned to realize that hey we have to let him be who he wants to be, though. You know, he, we can't expect him to be just like we are. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going to find his own path in his own way, though. And I think that's one of the poor messages in the movie that was learning to accept each other as well, too. Yeah. Because his parents had a hard time that he wanted to be a musician. He wanted to be a musician. And, then, and his parents uh, didn't want to. And, of course, and of course, the same thing with, you know, the the grandfather, too. They didn't want to accept him because he was a musician either, yeah. So that's they really didn't, more they didn't respect his, his wishes for his own life. No. Roxanne says that's a little sad that they forget about you, but I guess that's the right time to incarnate. Uh, yeah, but honey, you're constantly incarnated. <laughs> Even when your little aspect is in heaven, you are having hundreds and thousands of lives all at the same time. So yes and no. <laughs> what does Adam say about the show? I don't know. Who's Adam? Do you really think the veil is thinning on this day? Oh, that's a good Great question. question. Great one. They do say that, don't they? Yeah, I do. You know, and the thing is... It's possible. I think it's a very good possibility. Yeah. Yes and no. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Is it physically thinning? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. It's getting dinner. But, but what happens on Halloween and All Saints? People are remembering mm, their loved ones their loved ones their deceased loved ones so what happens is we are feeding the afterlife with a massive amount of energy and attention and thought right on these days we are literally feeding the existence of an afterlife yeah think about it right we are giving it energy that yes they're still out there and they can hear us and you know we're <laughs> we're we're um we're going to their graves and we're talking to them we are you know in certain parts of the world we they literally believe that the dead are coming to visit and so on and so forth so yes in that moment uh, our collective belief system takes a different twist doesn't it? it it goes into the direction of yes they're still out there yes they didn't disappear uh, yes, we can communicate to them. And in that energy, you actually open up the awareness, you open up the communication abilities, you feed the belief system that we can communicate and that they can communicate with us. Therefore, that belief system can create people experiencing more spiritual activity uh, on that day because our belief system. And our faith too, basically. And our energy at that time says yes. Today it is possible to communicate. Yeah. So it's it's the, I, I, whatever I, I, you believe. Yeah, and I think it heightens it. It heightens it even uh, more. Creates. Clearly. Yeah, it heightens it more. So clearly. a lot of times when you don't believe in spirits, you don't believe in ghosts, you don't believe in communication, you don't believe in mediums, you don't believe in all of that. Um, you're never going to experience anything like that because your belief system no. will block that communication. But yeah. on Halloween and All Saints, everybody's talking to their loved ones. Everybody's yeah. going to the graves. They're either putting flowers on. They're putting offerings out. They are uh, pretending that spirits are coming out. But even pretending feeds the energy of communication. And Very therefore, sure. 
allows spirit, gives spirit the chance to use that belief system to um, literally reach out uh, and, and reach you and actually connect with you because they're being, the communication is being strengthened by the belief system of mankind. So yes and no. I Good. hope that answers your question, <laughs> Isabel. <laughs> All right, guys, any more questions before we hit the road? It's a lesson for us, us parents to respect what our children want to be. It is, and, and that's what that movie shows. Yeah, you know? absolutely. They've always said the veil between the side and next is dinner on Halloween. I just explained that. That makes sense. Good. Do the dying go back and forth to the other realms and have past relatives visit them before they go? Okay, well, spirits don't need to transport. Question. Good question. <laughs> Phil, spirits don't have to cross anything. <laughs> um, all they do is they change vibration and they're next to you in a second. <laughs> so, and I can, and I can. so do they do they reach out to you? If you reach out to them, then yes, they will be reaching out to you. Absolutely. So I do believe that they spend more time with us on Halloween or on All Saints. Why? Because in that moment we are talking to them, we are Absolutely. communicating to them, we are thinking of them, we are remembering them, and we are bringing back memories of our times together. And when soon, the moment you think of a person, the moment you remember things, the moment you bring anything uh, energetic of that person into your thoughts, into your heart, boom, they're right there with you. Okay? Yeah. Instant. It's instant. Okay? There's no time lapse. They don't yeah. need to take a bus to get to yeah. you. It's instant. So it doesn't matter when that is. Let's say you're working and you are focusing on your job and all of a sudden your, your dead grandmother pops into your head. Say hello. Okay? That's her way of saying, hey, good morning. How are you doing, honey? Okay? When you're not focusing on it and they pop into your head out of nowhere, I can guarantee you they are coming and saying hello to you. And they will do it in a moment where you're not thinking of them because that should leave no doubt that that's them connecting with you because if you are talking to them and requesting them to be there and then you think of them you will just say or think that it's just your imagination because you're thinking about them but when they come into you without you ever having any moment of thinking about them then that's your validation that they're really they're really there and they say hello and i had that all the time when i was working so yeah i think i think another thing too is like i had a I think about that recently, though. The Rolling Rob with the Emma show. You talk to his mother. Now, well, Rolling with Emma is my show. <laughs> I my my guide is Eric, not Adam. And I think you're talking about uh, the, the Chilling with Adam show. So I don't communicate to Adam anymore. Uh. Only with Eric, because he's my guide. I only allow my spiritual team in uh, when I'm off the clock. <laughs> only my team. How can you feel if your past one loved is with you? Oh. Oh, you can feel that in different oh, ways. Oh, God. I, I've, had, I've had, I can testify this experience, though, because um, uh, one time um, I was meditating, though, like that, stuff like that, and I kind of called out to my sister and my friend who had passed on of course and and the weird thing was it took some time of course but eventually i could i could kind of feel their presence around me though like stuff it was very it's a knowing it's a knowing it's a knowing though but kind of like this i, I could not only sense them but i could see that they, i could kind of see that they were there visually with me though like and stuff and they were like holding my hand though which was really really very intense and very interesting because why because when you see them you know you don't really see them like you see us you know, it's almost kind of like, like this kind of like this, this very thin kind of like, I don't know, vague kind of like. Yeah, but not everybody sees them. And, and I think that, she wants I, to know how would you, I think you can feel them in different ways. You can feel them. Gerald is very visual. I'm very visual. So when he, when he, when I, this is me, when we're watching TV and all of a sudden the spirit comes in our presence, I'll first say, there's somebody here, I can feel it. And then he will see them in his mind. So <laughs> he's a very visual thinker. So to him, 
they will come in his mind as a picture, kind of like daydreaming. So sometimes, you know, your, your mother, your father, your grandmother, they might just pop in. A picture of them might pop in. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's one way for them to reach out. Another thing is just a feeling, like I feel mom's here. Yeah. You know, like like you used to be a kid, for example, and your mom's deceased, and, and, and it just reminds you of that feeling when you were watching TV together. Or it during could be med during meditation too as well. During a meditation where, where you see them and they talk to you. Or it could just be that you're 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 talking to your mom uh and, who's in heaven and in and, and all of a sudden a song while you're driving your car, all of a sudden yeah, a song that, that pops a lot. up. That a lot. To us that happens all the time. Oh, God We're yes. talking about Freddie, boom, the next song that comes up is is Queen. You know? Um so it, it's it's really different way so this they can use songs on the radio to communicate to you sometimes they make lights flicker um, yeah. they do that sometimes too um sometimes they'll leave items for some people i know people where their son leaves them little heart-shaped rocks everywhere she walks she will find a rock that's heart-shaped or uh, i know a person who always gets every morning there's a penny on his dresser that's funny actually Every morning, a, a penny. He takes it away every day. But when he wakes up, he goes to bed. There's no penny. He wakes up. There's a penny. Arlo, make Ar Arlo tend to make an odd that disappear, though, that you hit somewhere, though. Then, like, a couple of days later, it popped back up again, though. Yeah. And sometimes you just feel their presence physically. Yeah. And uh, I have that a lot, where I physically feel their presence, and it feels like a cool breeze. So you're in a, in your home. All the windows are closed. Nothing is – there's no fan. Nothing – there's no wind. But all of a sudden, you feel a wind kind of – yeah, breathing like by. breezing by you yeah. and it's a little shiver like you get a little, oh, it's a little kind of nippy you know it's not ice cold but it's kind of like a cool breeze that just passes by that's a spirit that just kind of allowed you to know that there that there's somebody there yeah you know what i used to do to know for sure that there was somebody with me i would ask them to touch my arm Okay, and I would wait, and sometimes it would take five, ten minutes, nothing happened, and I would just focus on my skin um, <laughs> and, and, and just fo focus on, or focus on TV. I tried to keep my focus away from the mind and just kind of listen to some music or watch TV and wait for something to happen. And then I could see all of a sudden all the hairs on my arm would stand up, you know, and that was them manipulating my skin frequency. Um, or sometimes I would play with my hand. I would ask them to move my hand. Remember that? And then one yeah. day, one time, Eric, my hand starts to do this, right? And I couldn't control it anymore. And it just smacked me. <laughs> I remember that too. And it's Gerald nice. was laughing his ass off. And <laughs> it, was, it was my guide, Eric, who literally, because I told him, do something with my hand. So he smacked me. <laughs> it's typical, typical. But I thought it was pretty cool because I had no control over my arm anymore. It was like it was doing its own thing. You know, so there's so many different ways that you can communicate. But what's important is to remember if you want to communicate. Yeah. Let go of all expectations. That's very Let true. go of all preconceived ideas on what that communication needs to look like. You can send out an intention. Hey, guys, play with my arm if you ever have a minute, okay? But you have to, you know, get rid of the intention, yeah. the specific demands, get rid of the preconceived ideas on what the communication needs to look like, get rid of your fear, and get rid of your expectations. And All of that blocks their ability to communicate to and you. I think, I think you have to do it with fun, and this is a game, in a playful kind of game attitude. You really just yeah. have to say, hey, Let's see what you can do and just have fun, I, you know, and just let go of the expectations and, and just kind of let it flow as it is. It's kind of like playing with, with dolls or your Legos or your, car, you know, your micro machines. I don't even know they don't make those anymore, but I'm an 80s kid. What can I say? They were popular back then. Of course they were. <laughs> Little micro, micro machines. Um, but, um, you know, when you're a kid, you play to play. Yeah, true. You don't play with expectation. an expectation attached to it. I'm no, playing don't. with my Barbie doll, so one day I can be like my Barbie doll. Yeah. You know, no, you're playing just to play. There's no 
end result attached to it you know you don't play to reach a certain destination you just play because it's fun to play you need to have that same attitude when it comes to spirits just have fun just communicate talk to them as if they're right next to you and don't have any expectations of any communication back and then you'll see that the communication actually comes quicker and more clear than you can ever imagine because your fear and expectations are no longer blocking that communication so do it with a playful fun attitude and don't have any expectations when doing so yeah and i think it's most part they have to just let go just really let go though let go of this thing that, that, that there's a difference between you and them too as well though because we always think though you know like they, they, they are different than we are but they're not though they're just in a different realm they're just in a different part they're still with you all the time though you know just always remember that they can always still connect to you you know it's just about letting go of that expectation though that you don't have the ability to do this everyone has the ability naturally it's everybody has it we just have to learn to tap into it. And the only way to be able to tap into it, you have to let go of that expectation, though, that if it doesn't happen, though, that, you know, that this is not true or this is not going to really happen, though. And so and the moment you start doing that kind of crap, though, guess what? You're blocking yourself. And then you block their connection with them to come through to you. Yeah, see, Angel Angelisa says, I was a, at a ghost investigation, and they brought out the spirit box to see if they could pick up on spirit voices. I kept trying to communicate with my grandmother, asking her to come through, thinking of a memory we had together, but she didn't come through in the spirit box, so I wasn't sure if she was really with me. Now, why didn't she come through? You just had, what did I tell you about expectations? You just put demands and expectations that she needed to talk in that damn box. box yep. You cannot do that. The moment oh. you send out, this is how it's got to be. Yeah. The moment you are literally shutting the door in front of her face and she's like, what the hell? Yeah. Okay. So I can guarantee you she's with me because I can see her in my head and she's shaking her head. Yes, she is with you, but you cannot, you know, every time I get out a, a box to record their voice, right? I go, come on, Eric, you can do it. Guess what? I don't get squat. And that's why all those shows where they show the ghost hunting, it's all full of baloney. Okay. It's crap. All right, those things are just made up and they just, I mean, who goes ghost hunting when it's pitch black? Seriously, like ghosts only come out when it's dark. I know, seriously. I, mean, what? I never come get out. that point. I never get I that I make fun either. of those, those things know. are a joke, okay? But again, your expectation that the communication needed to happen in a way that you pre-intended it blocks her, a, her ability to communicate. I never expect EVPs. Okay, and I never hear any, but then I re listen to the recordings of the interviews that we do, and I always find one at least one. Okay, and it's not because I expected it, it's not because I say, Hey guys, put an EVP on there. Okay, it's because I don't expect one, I just send out the intention, Hey guys, you know, to make sure people know you're here, and that's it. Yeah. I don't care how, I don't care what way, I don't care. You know, I just ask them to let people know that they're here. Well, and they do in a way that they can. Because not every spirit has the ability to communicate in the exact way that you want them to communicate. No, they don't. Some That's... spirits, I talk to spirits every day, and some will only be, are only able to communicate with visualizations. They give me pictures. Some are very verbal, and they give me thoughts. Okay? Some uh, actually move things in my house. Every spirit cannot, cannot communicate in every way perfectly. No. Okay? That it is a skill that they have to do. Keep in mind that they have to lower their frequency and figure out how to manipulate specific energy in order to be able to have a certain communication. And so not every spirit is verbal and will be able to leave EVPs. Some can, some can't. No. Okay? So, but what's the biggest block for you was you expected or the, the group or whatever it was expected to get communication through this box. Well, it's, and it's, so you're blocking uh, that exact thing. So it, it's about having fun with it and not expecting anything. Exactly. It's the same thing too when I, when I have to do my healings with people though too. It's never the same though because, you know, we all connect in a different way though. And one thing that might relate to one person might not relate to you as well. You know, sometimes I have, when I do healings, sometimes the, they just come in randomly to me when I'm doing my healings. 
I don't ask for it. They just kind of just show up, you know. And they're like, "Hey, you need some help?" Or like, "Stop like And sometimes they even take over. So they just take over while I'm doing my healing sessions. I'm like, "Yeah." Oh. And he just like, lets them. He's like, "Okay, here we go." <laughs> you know. But that's what I'm saying to you. You know, it's 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 all about you know as a person. It's like how you are vibrating at that certain time period. If you're vibrating in a good vibrational state then you can connect them easier. And it's about having fun and letting yeah. it loose. You know, when I channel and I have a reading, I'm nervous as hell before every reading. I go to the bathroom like five times before I'm nervous I go time to healing. And why? Because I just kind of go with the flow. I don't have expectations and say, okay, you guys better show up. Um, the mm -hmm. moment I do that, guess what? Nobody comes because I'm sending out expectations. I go into a reading, go, I go into a reading trusting that whoever needs to come will come forward in that time and if nobody needs to show up at that time then nobody will it's just about having trust and faith and instead of expectations and demands and as people we always try to control everything yeah and sure. and it's that control that 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 is the one thing that blocks everything we ever want to manifest it's very true. And the same okay. thing when I do my healings too, though. It's like, uh, I always tell people, though, the more you open your mind to the possibility of this, you know, because like I, I can show you the door, but you're the one that has to walk it's through the door. It's about surrendering. It's about surrendering. It's about surrendering and letting go. It's like, the moment you let go, whether whether, you, whether you're, you're talking to a loved dead deceased one, whether you're doing healings, it's, it's the same thing. It's all about letting go of that control, though. Because the moment you start trying to control something, though, guess what? You're limiting it, you know? Yeah. You limit. Just let go. Because Roxanne says it's so hard not to have expectations. But that's the thing. In life, you have to learn to flow with what is. Yeah. And you have to have the belief system that even wh whether I see them or not, whether I can communicate to them or not, they are hearing me. They are listening to me and they are communicating to me and I am in some way or form communicating to them. It's about having that belief system in place, not to need the validation that they are communicating to you. Absolutely. The moment you let go of that need for validation is the moment where the validation comes naturally. The moment I let go of the need to know what's happening, who's there, what's going on, is the moment that spirits were able to talk through me. So when I go into reading, no expectations, I trust. I trust that if somebody needs to step forward, somebody will. And I just have faith. No expectations, just faith. And that's what it is. You need to just know that whether or not you can communicate to them, they are communicating to you always. The moment you think of them, the moment you talk to them, they are communicating to you. Whether you can perceive it in your human form or not, that is, that it is, is happening. That is very, very true. It does. I, mean, I, I have that happen to me all the time, constantly, though. You know, sometimes they'll just pop up, I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm like, I'm like, hey, you know. Yeah, we don't expect them. No, because I, I don't, because I, I don't put this thing, when I, when I talk to spirits, though, and it's like that, whether I'm doing it just like now or when I'm doing my healings, all that like that sometimes. I say, hey guys, if you guys want to help out, okay, great. If you don't, no problem. It's cool. You know, whenever you just want to pop in for a little talk or you feel like I need help during healing, go ahead, pop up. I don't expect anything from them. I don't. And because I don't expect them, they just show up randomly because why? Yeah. Because, because they know that I don't have this expectation, you know? And I always tell people this when I do my healing, it's like you have to let go of the expectation, though, that, that you don't have the ability to be able to heal yourself. You do have the ability to heal yourself though. You know, you just have to let go of it completely. We're more powerful than we believe to be. 100% And not. they are communicating to us 24 seven. Whether it is a thought you get, whether it is them. You know, the thing is, as humans, we believe we do all the work. <laughs> and 90% of what you feel of what you think, the oh, God, ideas yes. that pop into your head, you 90% doesn't come from you, okay? The 10% of fear, that's you. Uh, all the other ideas, the guidance, that's guidance, okay? You get this idea all of a sudden, oh my God, I really wanna do that. Do you think that really comes from you? No, it comes from your higher self, it comes from your team, it comes from family members who are trying to guide you in a direction where you can find peace, love, uh, excitement, passion, uh, inspiration and so on and so forth every time you have a bad feeling about something that is your team saying hey 
let's turn the other way, okay? This is not the right thing for you to do. When we feel bad about something, we feel like we're failing, but actually it is our team giving us direction that what's happening at this moment is not right for us. We need to make changes. We need to go into a different direction. We need to change uh, relationships, whatever it might be at that time. Your bad feeling is actually a positive because it's an indicator that what you're something that you're doing at that moment, something that you're going through is not working for you and needs to change. What humans usually lack is the the guts, the glory, the 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 nerve, the courage to change their reality because we're so stuck to what we have, that little bit of security that we think helps us actually stops us, but we're not courageous enough to make decisions to turn and change everything around and to take risks and so your team will give you bad feelings <laughs> and you think it's a bad thing but it's actually a good thing they're trying to say hey something ain't right here you hey. know you know you're in a relationship and you feel shitty every day with that person hey this person isn't right for you and what do we do we completely ignore it we blame it on ourselves and we feel bad because we feel bad and we go into a depression and we bring ourselves down and we hate ourselves for it and the truth is we always have a choice to make changes even if you're not Absolutely. sure what the well, changes the are at yes. the time yeah, even if you're not sure what direction to go into just changing your uh, mentality about your journey and saying, okay, you know what? This is just temporary. I need to move in a different direction. Yeah. Um, just having that switch of perspective, yeah. um, just um, expressing gratitude. Oh, thanks guys for letting me know that this is not the right path for me. Thanks guys for letting me know that this might not be the right person for me. Just finding gratitude, communicating to them 24 seven nonstop, you know, you have to talk to them as if they were still at living at home with you and because they are just in a different frequency. And, and, so, I think the, and I think the thing you have to remember is don't think that you are, know that you are. You know, know, yeah, know, 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 that, know, know, know it to your core because the moment you start knowing it to your core, you know, we tend to think too much with our brains. You know, we tend to use too much of our minds. You know, you know let go. You know. Like, don't like, think about communicating. Like, just no. communicate. Yeah, know that you can't communicate. And know, know that, that they're listening. have the ability to communicate. Because when you know that you have the ability to communicate, guess what? They are going to reach out to you. Because why? Because you're operating at a different frequency, in a different vibration, because your vibration is changing. And the moment you change your vibration, you will start seeing amazing things start to happen that you didn't even realize that was even possible. Because the moment you know you're communicating, the mo even if you don't get your validation, the moment you just know in your core being that you are communicating, you raise your frequency and you are confirming and manifesting a clear communication in that moment because you are telling the universe, it is so. And you're sending that out daily and you're talking to them and you're setting an extra plate for them and say, okay, grandma, come over for coffee. I got you a mug. Set a mug. Put, pour some coffee in it, okay? Invite them over for coffee and cake. You know, they will be there. They will not turn down an invitation. No. Okay? They will be there. The moment you know that communication is happening, whether or not you receive validation, the moment you know and you validate that you know is the moment you start manifesting a better and clearer communication without you having to do any extra effort. Yeah. And I think the real, I think the one thing is, you see that really in the movie Casper though with the father. He puts his appetite because he really wants to see his wife though. That's why his wife never comes to him because he's put in that he has to see her though. But when is he? But when does he come and see him though? When he decides to let go of expectations yeah. that she might not show up, but you then when I was, that, and, and then she shows up though. See, she shows up out of nowhere because guess what? He broke down all the walls. Yeah, you know he. he People have to understand that our mind is the most powerful tool that we have. Yes. And what you believe acts as law into your journey. Yeah. So you need to believe and you need to know. It's just, for me, it's a fact. There's no belief, believe it or not. It is a fact <sighs> that they can hear you. No matter what you do, say, think, feel, boom, they can tap into all of that and they do. Ding. They do. Okay? So you need to just know. 
that they're there and communicate to them. Invite them over for parties, uh, you know, have coffee with them. Tell them your story. And I can guarantee you during that week, let go of the expectation of getting an answer right away. But during that week, when you're not expecting it, that's when you're going to get a sign that they were present. And that's <laughs> where you might get an answer to the questions that you're asking them. Yes, absolutely. Because the answers always come at a moment when you're not expecting them. And why is that? Because the expectation disappeared. Okay. Listen to your heart, not your brain. The brain's a troublemaker. It is. It is. Is this still life? Yes, Tina. You made it. Yes. It's still life, honey. Yes. Yeah. Almost two hours now. I'm getting a little tired, though. <laughs> But we're spending extra time with you. Yeah, we are. Just Ooh. because we love, love you. Guys. We love you. And we're having a bloody good time. And we're having, a, and as you can tell, no trick-or-treaters here. So you're our trick-or-treaters. There you go. I wish I could give you candy. Well, I'm sending I'm, you imaginary candy. I'm giving you a bled. We usually always buy candy, but nobody ever comes to our door. Nope. Yeah. This country is pathetic when it comes to trick or treaters. But hey. Well, hey guys, I hope you guys all enjoy this. We had a lot of fun doing this, guys, and stuff. You know, hey, what movies did you think that should have been on this list, though? Yeah, yeah. is there any movies that you think, as a family, yeah. you, you would have put into our top 10 list? Let us know. Yeah, absolutely, guys. And stuff. Thanks, Teresa. Yeah. And guys, I hope you guys have a great Halloween. No, it's like something like that. Don't eat too much candy, of course, like that stuff. Yeah, you're going to get a bellyache otherwise. Uh, don't steal too much of your kids' candy, though, because you know they're going to bring home all the good stuff. If you're like me, <laughs> I always buy candy, and then I go, honey, it's for the kids. And I, <laughs> I'm the one eating it. I'm a sweet tooth. I love candy. That's so true. Although I try not to, but boy... Around this time, it gets really tough. You got Halloween. You got Thanksgiving. You Christmas. got Christmas. You got New Year. I mean, by the time it's February, I've gained 10, 10 kilos. <laughs> and then I have to go back on a diet. <laughs> I can't help it. I just can't say no to sweets. I mean, yeah. we're here to live. Exactly. Very I true. want the good stuff. Absolutely. I've told Eric, when I die, there better be a buffet of sweets. <laughs> Because I no longer have to watch my weight when I'm up there. <laughs> woo woo! Oh, I want so a party. Cool. I want all my spirits that I've ever communicated to be present. Yeah. And I want some private concerts from Freddie and a whole bunch. <laughs> I'm very demanding. Yeah. So it's going to be a great party when I go over. And I want a buffet of sweets. That's that's how I imagine my transitioning. So I am really looking forward to that one one point. Yeah. Aren't you? Yeah, I am. I mean, don't be scared. I mean, invent it. Make it real in your mind and it will be so, you know, even if it's only for a little bit. Woohoo. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Yeah, you know what? We did think of the Ghostbusters. Yeah. Ghostbusters is one of our favorite movies of all time. Yeah. It is. But why didn't we put it in there? It didn't really have the Halloween vibe. Yeah, it doesn't really have the Halloween vibe. I understand the whole ghost part in the movie, though, but the whole... It's more... For us, it's like a weekly movie. <laughs> we love the Ghostbusters. Uh, we didn't like the new one. No. I am anti-new movie. <laughs> Although they're making another one with the original one. I don't know. It has not, it had nothing to do with the women. It's just they changed everything. Oh, God. Just, there's there's only there's only one group of ghost besties. Of course there is. I mean how? I'm sorry. Didn't like the new one. No. All right, guys, we're gonna let you go. I hope you guys really enjoy Too this. Too much slime. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You never have enough slime on Halloween. Or the blood. I got a transition plan. I'll get on a ski lift and I'll take it'll take me up and up and away peacefully. And that's a good one. That is a good one. Are you gonna be surrounded by mountains? Because I would. I love the mountains. I love snow and I love 
Christmas trees. Me personally, me personally, to have a whole hallway of Christmas trees. Me personally, if I want to go, I want to, I want to go doing something I love doing. That's flying planes. Ah, oh, yeah. Does that mean you're gonna die in an airplane? If I have it my way, hell. You don't have to die in an airplane to, to go fly home. Just imagine you're stepping out of your body while you're sleeping, and then you're getting into your jet. Oh. You put on your your Top Gun outfit. Oh yeah. That's what it is. He's that, a, he loves Top Gun. Puts on his Top Gun outfit. No, he actually wanted to be a pilot, but he was he wasn't allowed in for some stupid reason. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it. Yep. That's what you're gonna do. You know, we already said when we're going, we're going together. So. Oh yeah, that's, we're gonna, that's our plan. That's our plan. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this Halloween special. We had a lot of fun with you guys. You guys can watch us afterwards if you want to. If you guys were not here available live for the showing itself, you guys can continue to comment afterwards as well, too, as well, guys. And there will be something new and special coming up very soon, though. But I'm not going to tell you, though, of course. You'll have to wait and see, though, of course, starting next month. And, but you'll have to wait a little, though. I will post the bot, though, uh, much later on, guys. And if you watching this on the Rolling with Emma group, because I tried to share it and I'm not <laughs> sure if that worked, um, but if you're watching it from there, you can join Gerald's group. It's called Gerald's Movie Relish, and um, you could probably find it if you just look for me. It'll get you there. And um, so don't be afraid to sign up because every now and then I'm a pro. Every now and then I use my pop. She is my pop. <laughs> I usually mess stuff up and I interrupt him a lot, but that's just who I am, and that's why you love me. You have too much makeup. <laughs> I'm not getting a kiss because I got too much makeup, <laughs> and he's got a knife, so I don't know. <laughs> All right, we are gonna have a little bit more fun here, yep. and uh, we hope you guys have fun too. I know in America it's probably not Halloween night yet. Nope. So you guys have fun. Communicate to your deceased loved ones. Have fun with them. You know, pull out a candle. See what happens when you ask them to blow it out. You never know. Um, have fun with them. And um, just know that they can hear you. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed Gerald's list of movies. And uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, guys. And have a bloody Halloween. <laughs> Bye.